Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for waiting and being patient with us. I'm so happy to welcome here. Um, my name is Ashley Bannon and uh, we are excited that you can all take part of a virtual launch event. Um, so we're happy to showcase our premiere of the, of our, the Inconvenient Truth. Um, and I will be hosting the question and answers later. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Welcome to No Monkey and welcome to the Golden Twenties 2.0. Within this next decade, the world will change much faster than ever before. The reason for this is the digitalization, the pressure to scale, the speed that organizations of all sizes are trying hard to follow up to avoid being left behind. Digital supply chains, big data platforms, artificial intelligence and machine learning, sensor technology, all great initiatives that will be leveraging capacities to grow higher, faster, bigger in this new hyper-connected world. Those initiatives are mainly driven and supported by highly complex ERP applications such as SAP. These applications are due to their size and importance essential for the entire world. Why? Let's have a little closer look on the relevance that SAP has for our society. SAP customers distribute more than 87% of the world's food. SAP customers produce more than 82% of the world's medical devices. Product safety solutions from SAP touch $5 trillion of all manufactured goods. SAP customers produce more than 77% of the world's beer. Let's change perspectives for a second. It takes decades of years to build up a company's reputation and only the seconds of a successful cyber attack to destroy it. What does a hacker need to be successful? Two things, time and money. Money for his hardware and his pizza. Time is given because the suspect never knows when the attacker strikes. And by the way, the attacker never leaves a business card saying, hi, I was here and I took with me XYZ. In my career, I've seen many companies that have purchased multi-millions for SAP security products, but never really enforced them to run. They even paid a yearly maintenance fee without using the software. The reason for this is that they want to show their auditor, hey, we have a tool for SAP security and the non sapanese speaking auditor was fine with it. Hello world, this is No Monkey. My name is Jochen Fischer. I'm the co-founder and CEO of No Monkey. My name is Marco Hammel, co-founder and CTO of No Monkey. So first of all, I would like to apologize for the turbulences we had uh, in, the, in the beginning right now of this live stream. Um, it has several reasons we are fighting an enemy we don't see right now. And it was the same here in the office today, but we are very glad to have you on board and to have you here with us for our world premiere of No Monkey. So today, um, we would like to teach you a little different aspects when it comes to SAP and especially when it comes to security. And when you imagine being a CEO or a CIO and you have to go on the journey to, uh, to secure and safeguard SAP, um, you're probably standing in front of a big, big complex wall. So what's the first thing you do? you probably start to Google. What options do I have? What can I do? Where do I start? And then you might think, hey, I'm a smart guy. I might ask my auditor. Because when I go on that journey, you might probably also want to have that tick after you have completed that journey. So you might contact your auditor, one of those many auditors around the globe, and they will also give you an answer on that for sure. But the question is, where do you get the real answer that you require based on what you need? Because um, a phenomenon kicks in when it comes uh, to the big corporations um, across the globe. What happens is they will provide you an answer and the answer is reasonable and it makes sense. But uh, quite often those big companies are decentralized around the globe. 
So you're mostly relying on the competence that sits in that particular area, in that particular country, where you get feedback on what's the first reasonable step. In addition, quite often there is also not only the auditing part within those companies, also a project part. And it's just normal that those companies also teach you or tell you what to do and look at their bench. What kind of consultants do I still have on the bench? And that's what they try to advise you to do next. So looking at the entire SAP ecosystem, we see different players in that game when it comes to security. And in fact, all of those parties you see should talk to each other. We have the SAP customers on one side. We have the system integrators on the other side. We do have the security vendors. We do have regulators or auditors. And all these stakeholders should play a role in that game when it comes to a consistent and holistic security strategy. Because a system integrator, he should actually educate the staff, the people, to serve the customer with security skills. It's not only the implementation of the software that it runs, it should run safe, secure, compliant. Also the security vendors on the other side, it's not only selling a security solutions. No, we also see them that they advise you to do the, re thing, th the right things from a security perspective and also encourage themselves to do security research because these are the subject matter experts. They need to do research on SAP security vulnerabilities and report them to SAP and then implement them within their product so the customers of SAP can be secured. We have the regulators. The regulators do great legal frameworks about all kinds of stuff. The most prominent example is probably the GDPR regulation, the General Data Protection Regulation that everybody has got in touch with already. So it's good to have that and that our data is protected. But what does that mean in particular for SAP? What does that mean compressed to that very, very special niche of SAP? And this is where we would like also the auditors and regulators to have definitely more knowledge about what needs to be done when it comes to SAP. So, Today, we will learn a few things uh, about SAP security, several perspectives, and I wish you a lot of fun with it. As of today, no company in the world can secure SAP end-to-end, -end, period. The complexity and the fast-growing technology changes and acquisitions are too massive and the security know-how is too limited in the entire SAP ecosystem. Security needs to be proactive, not reactive. It doesn't really help to prevent damage when you monitor that your house is burning. The SAP standard is mostly secure, but almost nobody only uses the standard software just the way it is out of the box. It needs to be configured and customized, mostly under heavy time pressure and delivery dates. And guess what's the last thing that people think about in this project? Right. Security. Wait, I'm just looking at it. Where is it? I thought you could tell me. Okay. Get everyone together, I'm coming. Let's hope this is an error. Sorry, who are you? Your last appointment. I think I would know. Sorry, I'm in a rush. It's pointless to place an army in front of the entrance when the back door is open. Please, check your calendar. Hope? It 
took 28 keystrokes and one email to breach your IT system. 15 keystrokes to make this appointment. 30 keystrokes to transfer the 150 million. Next time you could lose more than just money. Please, let me show you something. If you need to be right before you move, you will never win. Perfection is the enemy of the good when it comes to emergency management. Speed trumps perfection. Everything is fine. Thank you, Mr. Lee. You have three minutes. And you have three problems. An IT system contains different applications. Some of them are very complex with their own complex language. And that's at the core of your first security problem. Your three lines of defense the operations unit. Applications and languages are their home turf. The security unit monitors the whole system to spot attacks. The audit unit makes sure everything works the way it should. And here we have the issue. The operations unit is pressured to make everything work simple and fast. Security becomes an extra mile. To safeguard their comfort zone, they keep problems under their heads. Security sees unusual activities in the system, but not within an application. Audit should listen to the others, but like security, they don't speak those application languages. So they mostly rely on help from outside. So this is what you call the three lines of defense. But in reality, they are not lines. They are just towers. Each one stands for itself. Silo thinking, obsolete processes, which leaves you now. The way they will protect the company is when they work together, connected. Communicating along common strategies, operating along common processes. 90% of all the attacks are due to human errors. It all starts with the people. Because security is culture. And culture has to be lived. Do you want to know the second problem? When it comes to SAP security, a dangerous phenomenon kicks in which you can describe perfectly with a door. An SAP guy knows exactly that when he opens that security door, an avalanche of extra work will roll in. A security guy opens the door, sees the complexity and closes the door as fast as possible, thinking that the SAP guys should take care of it. So welcome back. That was the second part of our fantastic movie. I hope you're enjoying it and you hopefully cannot wait to see the next episode of it. So what you see right now is our main actors of No Monkey and also the reason why this company is called No Monkey. What you see here is those monks that we have right here and they are related to SAP or not even to SAP, it's a phenomenon that kicks in with almost every, every application in the world. The reason for that is I'm using that as a red line to explain the phenomenon of SAP security. 
because who has ever seen someone out of an SAP department going up all the way to the sea level reporting to them, hey, we have unsecure coding. We are not quite sure how many interfaces we are. We are not quite sure about the configuration because we might have outsourced SAP. In a nutshell, we probably haven't done our security homework for many years and now we need a lot of money to fix it. This is totally out of the comfort zone and this is why this is unusual behavior. This is why this monkey doesn't speak. Moving forward to the second monkey of the three lines of defense, the security departments. Security departments are often sitting in their kind of Houston control center in front of many monitors and many things where alarms are going up, blinking, everything. So they visualize the entire company, but are they connected to SAP? That's the key question. This is a very strong niche. And what we have seen in the past years very, very often is that security departments mostly do not have any visibility into SAP. This is an issue because on top that they don't see, most of them don't speak the Japanese language. So two problems in one. They don't see, and even if they do, they don't understand. Mostly there is no connection to the SAP departments, so they don't even ask. They don't see. We have a third monkey, which is that monkey. And the third line of defense is the audit department. What does audit do? Audit regularly checks if the software, for example, of the application runs the way it must run due to regulatory requirements, internal policies, compliance policies, whatever. How do they do that? In fact, they mostly rely on third parties. They ask third parties to execute a penetration test, an application audit, or something like that. What happens then is strange. They take the results, go to the first line of defense, place the results there and tell them under pressure, I'll be back. In fact, they also don't speak the Sapolis language. They are relying on the information that was given to them by the third party. So how can they really prioritize in favor of their company to do the right things? For example, to minimize the attack surface. It's just reliability on the results from outside. And now you see a fourth monkey and you might have wondered maybe, is it three? Is it four monkeys? There's always that discussion. And here's the fourth monkey. What he is doing, I leave it to your imagination. But for sure, we know that this monkey might be a sea level, believing that he has three lines of defense. Do you want to know? The second problem. You still have one minute. What you need is a security strategy. Not just for the tech, but for the whole company. Now the second problem is that whoever you ask for help, security vendors, IT consultants, or auditors, they always have one answer, and it's never no. They might advise a product. They might advise a service. or both. But their answer isn't tailored to your company's needs. Their answer is tailored to their company's products, to their company's services, tailored to their agenda rather than yours. 
As a result, companies like yours blindly throw money at the end of the problem, and... And what's your agenda, Hope? Excuse me? We are not secure. Only a holistic approach would change it. But no one offers it. So far, I understand. But I don't understand. You stole 150 million, and yet you come here in my office, telling me all this. Let's end this show. What's your agenda? What do you want? I just want us to be safe. Us? Who are you really? You hack your own company? For a small employee like me, this was the only way to get to you. By the way, money is already back by now. My apologies. I had to demonstrate the gravity. Hope, is that your real name? You can secure us. But if you can, and you are here, what's the third problem? Took 9,701 keystrokes to write the screenplay. Hope is not a strategy. Your third problem is in real life. This movie would have ended after the phone call. Okay. Get everyone together, I'm coming. Let's hope this is an error. As of today, many companies are facing a problem that they don't really understand. As a consequence, most of them throw money at the problem, which is equal to technology. But the truth is, the technology doesn't help when you don't have the right processes and even more important, the right people in place to face this highly complex challenge. People, processes, technology, not vice versa. SAP might only be 5 to 10% of an entire IT environment. By having a closer look at it, you realize that your crown jewels are sitting in there. Finance, HR, logistics, it's the technical DNA of the world's biggest companies. Yes, what an exciting movie, isn't it? I hope you like it and I hope you post some feedback into the chat that Ashley is monitoring all the time. And uh, we really thank you to get your feedback on everything you see today, positive or negative. What we would like to invite you now is to join us uh, for our great initiative. We call it the Silverbacks. The idea of the Silverbacks um, came from our travels all around the world, Marco. 
that we had. We have visited many countries, many user groups, also expert groups for security. And that was phenomenal because there was great work being done. But it was always inside a country. And the SAP user groups mostly don't cooperate with each other. So it's kind of weird because every country or every individual SAP user groups starts on the green field to, to, to raise in a security approach. Why don't we share best practices? This is what we have asked each other. And this is why we came up with the idea to establish a network of experts. We call it the silverbacks. And uh, what we want to do now is give you an impression how the silverbacks work together to raise synergies in favor of the entire SAP ecosystem. As of today, there is no common standard to measure against security in SAP. No monkey aims to establish a dedicated security standard for SAP by building bridges to realize an SAP security alliance of subject matter experts worldwide. We call them the silverbacks as they have plenty of security experience in their specific SAP domain. Hey everybody, yours here from protect for s First of all, I hope you're all fine guys in these strange times, which it is. For those who don't know me, I'm an SAP security enthusiast and working in this field for 20 years already. From doing SAP implementations first and coding um, to later on helping customers secure their critical SAP systems, uh, which is hard over the past 10 years. Uh, my main driver has always been to help customers protect themselves better. And if that contributes to making the world a little bit safer, I'm happy to do so while having fun at the same time, which I think is quite important. Um, <clears throat> therefore, I'm quite happy to join the great team of No Monkey because I think they bring out the joy in sharing knowledge in this quite important field of SAP security. As a vendor of SAP security tooling, we pretty much know the technical side of security. But I think it's now time to also harden the soft side of SAP security. So guys, stay safe out there and let's make this thing work. Bye bye. That was excellent. Thank you so much, Joris. And today we are very happy to announce something. And even though we have social distancing, we can say tech. Because today, at the first day of No Monkey, we are happy to announce that we will found No Monkey Benelux. We have a great team on site and we are happy to be able to support SAP customers in the Benelux area with best practice security skills and we have top people with Joris and his team serving No Monkey in the Benelux. So, we'll see what else we have to come. Wazim, pick it up. Hi guys, uh, my name is Wasim Ajarab. I've been professionally working in security for the last seven years. I worked in the offensive and defensive side of things. I enjoy the offensive side and thoroughly enjoy on protecting the human side. And this is one of the main reasons I have joined No Monkey. No Monkey looks at uh, enhancing, improving, securing uh, companies through people and then looks at technologies as a security professional, you would know that if you fail to enter a company's network, then the only way to get into it is through people. And without taking much of your time, I'm excited for what's coming and excited to share with you No Monkey. Stay safe and see you soon. It's Marco from No Monkey. I'm doing SAP security since about seven years. Before of that time, I had various different roles within the IT industry, in the SAP ecosystem and outside. Um, you know, since I'm doing SAP security, I ask myself, what makes the difference between of organizations being successful in that area, securing their core ground jewel applications and, you know, organizations which are not. And um, one big difference is if an organization is uh, able to establish a culture of creating a common understanding about the need and the demands for SAP security. So as well, I'm doing equestrian sports since about 30 years. And there's a quite a similar issue where my sports partner don't understand my language. And no worries, the horses I'm doing equestrian sports with are taller than this one. 
and um, how is it possible um, that this kind of relationship is possible? By routines, by practice and always thriving for mutual trust. And the same principle we are establishing with No Monkey. So be No Monkey and stay safe. Detecting a security incident is key to stop the bleeding. To respond and to recover your systems requires highly sophisticated skills, which are extremely rare to find. Together with our Silverbacks, we will create the standard for SAP security and provide state-of-the-art know-how transfer via the NoMonkey Academy. Regular alignments of the Silverbacks will force the exchange of knowledge and improve it constantly. Security is nothing where you work against each other. It's something where you can learn from each other and share best practices. Yes, yeah, so the silverbacks, they need to have a body. And uh, actually, we have found a separate company, No Monkey Advisory, providing this body for the initiative of silverbacks, but of course, for some other initiatives as well. So as Jochen already mentioned, um, you know, what can be a good approach, a good methodology to start with the topic of SAP application security? And yeah, as you can see, um, the advisory is supposed to provide not only for the community of experts, but also uh, for the community of SAP customers, this service. So, you know, why we are going to do that? So, um, when you want to start with an initi initiative, you want to know, okay, where are you going to be at the end of the initiative? So, you know, you want to have a roadmap um, that determines uh, where do you want to be, where do you want to, um, you know, get in terms of your SAP application security maturity. Um, so we want to provide this body and this framework throughout the advisory um, to be able um, um, to help customers creating this roadmap as well as to enable others um, helping SAP using organizations creating a roadmap. And as part of a roadmap, you need to assess where you are right now. And uh, yeah, how you're going to do that. Certainly you can do a penetration test. You can do uh, an audit. And you know, you can ask your auditor to audit you. Um, you can try to do a self-assessment. You can do um, a red team um, setup, things like that. Many various points. Most of the time, um, I have faced a situation that however, it was all in a specific area or niche, most likely in the area of technology, when it was about to assess where an organization is right now in terms of the SAP security maturity. And, um, you know, that's just one piece of the puzzle. Uh, the other piece is, you know, how is your organization being structured? What are the processes um, around in your organization um, to secure SAP applications um, as well? you know, what are actually the pe people's knowledge as well as the people's skills um, dealing with the topic on a daily basis, or maybe not even on a daily basis, but let's say, for example, in an incident case. And, uh, you know, the assessment methodology we are right now implementing with, you know, uh, Vazim leading it, um, should be holistically cover all of these three areas in terms of, you know, how you can determine um, in an overall governance concept uh, what is actually the approach to go forward and, you know, to determine at first where you are at now or where you want to be. And uh, very important is that the result of this type of initiative and approach, you know, is fruitful and, uh, you know, can help to create a security culture within an organization. Strategy without tactics is the slowest route to victory. Tactics without strategy is the noise before death. Learn, adapt, execute. No monkey wants to enable the right people to learn the right skills in the right depth. 
There are thousands of SAP professionals and thousands of security experts on this world. But you need the combination of both to have an SAP security expert. So you either have to train the InfoSec guy in SAP, the Sapanese language, or the SAP professional needs to learn security skills. Combined with a tailored governance model, which should also be relevant for individual KPIs, you can immediately increase the security of an SAP environment significantly while investing in your employee skills. Yeah, so how do we achieve that, uh, you know, learning is being accepted and, uh, you know, is enjoyable for the learners? So, you know, with the whole topic of a blended learning concept where, uh, you know, we would like to provide you as an SAP organization the offering that, uh, you know, with the results, for example, of applying the assessment methodology of the advisory, you know, you know where there are knowledge and skill gaps in your organizations and, you know, what is actually the best part of your organization um, to uh, leverage knowledge and skills and, uh, you know, to, to, to increase certain capabilities within your organization. Um, E-learning is a very important part to scale that, you know, especially in larger organizations. And, uh, yeah, we, we have set up from the very ground an e-learning setup for SAP Learning. And I would like to give you um, a quick introduction, um, you know, what ideas we have and uh, how does it look like as of now. So, you know, this is, for example, our brand new learning environment with, you know, we will just have a snippet of uh, one of the e-learning modules we've created, uh, Fundamentals of SAP Remote Services. So, like with every learning, um, the, um, uh, the learner needs to understand actually, you know, what are the objectives, um, so what I'm about to learn. Um, over here and actually what do I need to know in advance that this type of learning makes sense uh, to me. So here yeah, when we look at you know some parts of the course it's not the whole course but just a part of it we see that um, um, you know there is video as part of the overall um, of the overall thing that you know there is uh, there is text-based description um, of the different areas, you know, in including um, including um, you know screencasts about how to use certain tools. In this example, um, you know how you can use Nmap as a port scanner to do um, a good service discovery um, within a network for SAP environments. And you know, even more important is that people can try out directly. Um, what they have learned in a learning environment. So I just jumped into our learning environment where uh, we host actually um, an environment of, of, of tools and applications um, in combination with um, SAP applications where, you know, learners, for example, can try out what they have seen, what they recognized, what they learned, <coughs> for example, using, um, using Nmap as a port scanner um, or, you know, for some security professionals accessing uh, an SAP GUI the very first time um, they come across with. So, how is this all being structured and combined between of the assessment methodology in the advisory as well as um, in the academy? So, um, what um, what we have created is um, a governance concept which should, you know, both in mutual directions. So where being is assessing an organization's capabilities and, uh, and skills for the different people working in an organization as well as um, allowing um, people in an organization to figure out according to their profile, to, re to their responsibilities, um, what is you know, important to know and to learn for them um, to serve their organization best. Um, so we have created actually um, a skills and knowledge metrics when it comes to SAP security that on one dimension 
is uh, defined by the NISC risk management framework and on the other dimension by you know certain specific areas which are usually applying when we are talking about SAP technology. Um, each of the learnings we are providing, um, being it in a virtual classroom setup as well as in an e-learning, is, uh, is planned to, uh, to um, contain one hour of learning, um, you know, providing the actual learning objectives, so what is about to be, um, you know, the skill or the knowledge provided throughout the learning, you know, the necessary background and theory, as well as exercises, gamification, quizzes, and so on, ending up with a learning control. And um, yeah, how do you select as, a, as somebody being interested in SAP learner, uh, in SAP learning, uh, in SAP security learning specifically, how do you select what is appropriate for you? So for example, if you are working in offensive security, uh, most likely you will be interested in, uh, you know, identifying vulnerabilities, um, so which is the, um, you know, the very first column of that matrix. Um, being it in, 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 the, in the platform part of an SAP technology as well, you know, when it comes to interfaces, um, you know, integrating um, other technologies in SAP, when it comes to access, uh, as well as, you know, customization of the SAP technology. If you are, for example, an SAP basis administrator, for example, um, where your your first and foremost um, objective is to you know protect um, the environment you're responsible for. Um, you, for example, focus on um, on on learning content related to the platform. Um, so when it comes to patching of SAP applications, when it comes to you know minimizing access um, throughout um, the the network environment. Um, you know, configuration of firewalls, uh, hardening of the database, things like this. And uh, this is the overall structuring um, of the learning content. As well as you can think of, it's also the structuring how knowledge and skills can be assessed. So within all of these different areas and clusters, um, we are throughout the advisory providing the assessment catalog, uh, where especially for organizations, with uh, let's say a few to, uh, to, to no governance in terms of, you know, for example, the vendors, um, they letting um, operate their SAP environment um, that, um, you know, they can figure out uh, what type of learning is important for the people in their organization. Our biggest communication issue is that we don't listen to understand. We listen to reply. No monkey is following a pure customer-centric approach that is tailored to the customer's individual requirements. Like for example, what is your risk appetite? Is it a 2, a 6 or an 8 out of 10? What is your resources internally, externally? What is your budget? What is your timeline? These are all parameters that need to be defined within a holistic security strategy and cannot be determined from anyone outside. Ideally, this is common sense defined by all three lines of defense and covered and approved by the sea level. We appreciate your trust and commitment in NoMonkey. This is why we launch an exclusive early bird offering. Customers who believe in the NoMonkey approach will get a special discount to purchase SAP security trainings. In addition, they will get the opportunity to prioritize the roadmap of modules which will be developed in consequence. On top of the purchase credits, we call them Cuyambo, will not have an expiry date, which usually expire within 18 months of time. Be an early bird, no monkey. Hi, and welcome to the last part. Not yet the last part. There are a few parts coming afterwards, but it's our last live part so far and we're happy to answer your questions. So Ashley, did we get any questions from the audience so far? Hi, yeah, we actually do have a, a good question. Um, this one comes from, um, and I apologize right now, Morga Dan um, has asked, will there be any way to share this launch video link or anything afterwards after the launch? 
Yes, so we have a live session right now for sure, but we record it and we will provide the links afterwards, after that session. So you can share it. Sharing is always caring. Distribute it to your partners, to your customers, to your whoever you would like to let them see um, what you've just seen and experienced within the last minutes. The link will be sent out shortly after the event. Perfect. I have another question here. It says, um, how do people join the Silverback community? How do people become a part of it? Yeah, thank you, Ashley. That's a very great question. So right now, actually, we are engaging with the people in our network, um, you know, and um, do discuss with them the offering uh, of the Silverback community and, of course, the duties that comes with them. So, for example, we have uh, defined a, a code of ethics for uh, the members of the Silverback community. And, um, you know, we have a kind of assessment criteria in terms of how long uh, is somebody already working as a professional in the field of SAP security and, you know, what has his or her contribution being to the community as of now. And, um, you know, by that, um, within the very first set of the Silverbacks, so the, the very first people um, who joined the community, we will decide uh, together um, if an application, you know, is being accepted or not. So it will be, as again, again a community approach uh, to decide who is going to be a member uh, of the community. Yes, and let me add something to that. Uh, we will shortly launch the first alignment of the Silverbacks where we bring them together, introduce them also to each other, and uh, it's very important for us that this is nothing where you work against each other, as we yeah. have learned before as well. So um, it's important to exchange knowledge, exchange knowledge about vulnerabilities, about common best practices, about that. So this is a higher level than a corporate level. This is really working together to run SAP secure together. Okay, and I have uh, another question here, and it says, um, are the learnings only for people who have extensive, extensive knowledge in the SAP world, or is it also for other people? Uh, that's a very, very great question uh, regarding the learnings. Uh, we are focusing uh, very much, um, not only, but very much on security professionals. So uh, if you have the challenge as a security professional to know more about SAP application security um, to help your organization um, you're working for, as well as, for example, uh, providing advisory and consultan uh, consultancy um, you know, to others, um, this is actually the place to go. So um, taking, for example, uh, the, ex the example module I presented to you, um, it is, it is very suitable, for example, for people uh, working in offensive security, doing penetration testing, doing infrastructure assessments, and so on. Um, and, uh, you know, um, half the challenge right now of dealing with a complex assessment scenario when it comes to, um, you know, assessing SAP application environments. Uh, that, is, that is very much suited for them. However, for example, um, if, um, if you were working as an, as an SAP administrator um, or as a, as a software developer in the area of SAP technology, um, you will learn um, you know, how you can protect um, your, um, your technologies uh, you're dealing with on a daily basis against common type of attacks and uh, you know, how you can define a baseline um, for your environment. So, um, no, it is, uh, uh, it is uh, of course, professional learning uh, we are offering here, uh, but it's not specifically. Specifically, uh, not uh, for, uh, for SAP technology experts only, but for uh, security experts as well as, for example, for, for compliance and governance experts. Yeah, and let me also add something on this because we've been talking about that fourth monkey yeah. earlier as well. So even if you are a C-level and you have to do a strategic SAP security initiative, there are many things that can be done wrong. And we can also help with our silverbacks and our advisory to handhold you, to guide you on that journey. Because you don't have to reinvent the wheel new. It's all there. And we have the best practices. We've seen them across the globe and we are happy to share that with you. 
Okay, I have another question for you guys, and this question says, how long um, does it take to go through each learning, and what can they expect from that? Yeah, so uh, thank you very much for this question. So um, the learning modules, so this is the, this is the clustering approach for all of the learning content, um, are designed that uh, within one hour you can, um, you know, um, go through all of the exercises and the content of a learning module. So, of course, um, you know, if you struggle with an exercise, then maybe it take longer, or if you are already very experienced in that field, um, where, you know, we will provide pre-assessments uh, to a learning that, you know, um, you're already very familiar with the topic and there's maybe not too much new content and it can be less than an hour, but uh, our, um, our um, quality assurance process around uh, tries to design the learning um, to be uh, one hour of learning, which I think is something um, achievable um, on a daily or working, uh, working, uh, working day that uh, you can um, you know, uh, take time for about one hour of learning. Which is, by the way, a good thing to do while staying in a home office, as these special times are right now here. Um, quite often we see that uh, security becomes an extra mile where no time is mm -hmm. for, because you have to deal with it in a daily matter, and uh, the last thing you worry about is security. Right now we are in, s in, in special times where you might find the opportunity to find a slot to mm. do some education on SAP security, which you usually don't have when you are under project pressure. Mm. So it's probably even a chance in, uh, chance in those special times right now to consume some learnings and increase your skill set. Mm. And uh, maybe I add um, in this regards that when it comes, for example, to our offering of, of virtual classroom training, so not all content we have in terms of learning is yet already available as e-learning content. Um, so, and you know, as an organization, maybe you have very, very specific questions um, um, uh, which you don't want to share, let's say, with, uh, with, with the world when it comes to SAP security, but you want uh, your professionals to be trained in that area. Um, then in the virtual classroom, or maybe, um, uh, maybe sooner than later, um, also in, in uh, physical classroom trainings, um, we um, can, of course, customize the approach uh, to your organization's needs. And uh, this is also uh, being taken into account by this modularized process where, for example, within a virtual classroom training throughout the day, um, we right now, and we already gained uh, some experience with, uh, with some of our customers already, uh, we can uh, do seven modules uh, throughout the day of learning. Okay, do we have another question? That does not seem to be the case so far. Then Marco, it's time for us actually to say goodbye, but not without telling you that two other parts are coming and following in a short period of time. So stay tuned, don't get that, because that's a people part, which is very important and our responsibility for the entire world. Those four gentlemen are going back to my living room now where they haven't been for quite a while. And I can say thank you for your patience, thank you for your time, and don't be a monkey, be an early bird and support our approach. Thank you. And stay healthy and safe. No Monkey is aiming to be a carbon negative company, as it is our responsibility for the younger generations to protect this planet. We only have this one, and again, hope is not a strategy.
hope is not a strategy. One, two, one, two, three, four. Me don't want a monkey to stop my show. Me don't want a monkey to bring me down. Me don't want a monkey to stop my show. Me don't want a monkey to make me frown. Look at how the people them are having fun. Look at how the people them are jumping around. Bring bang a thing, music is my thing. Bring bang a thing, all what I ain't bring. I from a small boy, I love music. And my parents didn't want me to play no music. But uh, I was deeply in it, and I really had a hard time to get my guitar. Everything was for me not easy, but true, I have strong love for it. I believed in it. And without the music, it wouldn't be Wally. Bing, bing, I think music is my thing. Bing, bing, I think oh, what I bring. Bing, bing, I think music is my thing. Bing, bing, I think oh, what I bring. It's a vision of what I had in me deep as a kid already. It's a hope that I had all to play and that the people come to me and telling me, Wally, I came here with such a bad mood and I listened to your music and now I'm feeling so good. Your message is strong and that is for me joy in my heart. No monkey don't stop my show, gal. They can't stop my show. No monkey don't stop my show. They can't stop my show. Nice brother, man. Yeah, man. One love, <laughs> Thank man. you. One yes. love. The monkey don't stop my show, boy. He can't stop my show. The monkey don't stop my show. He can't stop my show. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. That's <laughs> this cool. is nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah.